Don't look now. That's all I'm going to say. Don't look now. Today on Locked on Tigers. Don't look now. You are Locked on Tigers. Your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I am, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every single day, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. I want the world to know we back up. No, I'm not going crazy with it. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. I appreciate y'all. Um, look, uh, winning's fun. Winning's fun. And, and we're going to try to not get like too high with the highs, just like on opening weekend, how we weren't trying to get too low with the lows and everything. It's one series, but Goodness gravy is winning fun. And especially when you're beating a good team. This is the the World Series champs, just sans Altuve, really. It's a darn good ball club over there in Houston that you have now taken two on two consecutive nights and have a chance to sweep them on Wednesday afternoon. And the great thing is, even if you don't, that's fine, right? Like, you know, if you lose by 10, maybe we, we... Kind of have a different conversation, but you go out there, you play competitive ball, you you lose whatever by two runs, you drop tomorrow three to five or whatnot. We're gonna we're gonna look back and be like, all right, they played three competitive games and took two of them against the World Series champs. You won a series against the Houston Astros. So whatever happens Wednesday is 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 icing. That's a cherry on top. It's all good, baby. It's all good. Tigers win the series against the Houston Astros in Houston. Six to three was the final score on Tuesday night. Matt Manning started this game. I guess we'll start there. I don't know why I always seem to just start with pitching and then go to offense later. I don't like plan on doing that, but I I think chronologically throughout the game and like chronologically, like uh, the pitcher is like the first thing I think of. Um, so I guess we're going to start there again, but I'm, I'm not trying to like make that a habit. Regardless, Matt Manning did start this ball game five and two thirds innings pitch one out away from the Tigers first quality start of the season. I don't believe they have one so far on the year, uh, six hits, two earned runs, two walks and four strikeouts. Uh, look, this, this was a, a pretty on brand Matt Manning start, but it was solid. There was solid. There's a lot of good to take away from this one. 53% four-seam fastballs. We expect that. We're very aware that Matt Manning is a is a fastball-heavy pitcher. The velocity was good in this one. It was solid enough. 92.5 miles an hour, I think, was the average fastball velo in this one for him. Uh, and he ended the outing with uh, – he was pumping 95, I, I think, in the very – he walked Kyle Tucker 0-2 count, and then Kyle Tucker is just one of the best hitters on the planet – and uh, worked 0-2 to a walk, and, and he ended with a 95-mile-an-hour heater in his last pitch in the outing. It was like his 80th pitch of the game or whatever. So uh, that was nice to see, but good, solid enough average velo as well. Uh, I thought the slider played pretty well in this one uh, too, which is which is always good to see. The big question for him is how good is his secondary stuff going to be throughout his career if he can get a solid secondary pitch, which is going to be the slider presumably, but if he can get a really solid third pitch, that's that's a big key for him as well. And we didn't see too much of a really great third pitch in this one, but the slider did play, and I, I was pretty pleased with that. Um, and the biggest thing for him is just always going to be fastball command. Now, that's what it's always going to be. It, it always has been. It, it is right now, and it's always going to be uh, how good his fastball command can be on a start-to-start basis. Um, we talked about it in his preview a few weeks ago. Uh, his fastball is not only good when located well, it is great. It, it is a massive plus pitch when it is located correctly, uh, and it's all about how consistently he can have good fastball location. Um, and, and in this one, it was inconsistent kind of from batter to batter. Like you saw 
Like what Jordan Alvarez, he, he was dotting at, at times against Jordan, struck him out looking with a fastball at the knees. Like really some some really, really impressive stuff uh from him uh, against some hitters. And then like for whatever reason, anytime Kyle Tucker came to the plate, zero fastball command. Like literally none. No command really of anything. Then Kyle Tucker made him pay, obviously, on a 3-0. Fastball, he tried to sneak by him up and in, and Kyle Tucker took it about 900 feet. So uh, it, it really is. It, it was it was consistent. It, I was going to say consistently inconsistent, but I don't even know if that's right. It was inconsistent from batter to batter. And you saw the flashes of when it was on, how good of a pitcher he can be. And, and you saw how, I don't want to say how bad of a pitcher he can be, because I don't think he looked awful really at any point. But you saw what happens when he doesn't have fastball command. The secondary stuff just isn't good enough to carry him. That's, I guess, the point I'm trying to make. He, almost all of his outings are, are are based upon fastball location. I, I don't want to be a broken record. I feel like I just said that 90 times in the last two minutes, but I really want to drive that point home that that is by far the most important important thing going forward in Matt Manning's development. Uh, that and and if the slider is a secondary pitch, can you develop a third one? Threw the changeup a little bit today. I think it was kind of a non-factor, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, really solid start, uh, especially considering if you take a look back at, I don't know, a month ago, maybe even not that long, maybe like three weeks ago, uh, the conversations that we were having on this show and just the fan base was having in general about Matt Manning, I think we will all gladly take what he just gave us in his first start of the season, right? Like, least we forget after two spring training starts, people were like, Matt Manning shouldn't be on the opening day roster. And, like, so people are coming for Matt Manning's job in the rotation and whatnot. And uh, he went out there and, and, and was an out away from the Tigers' first quality start of the season. Um, and, and, yeah, we'll gladly take it. That, that fastball will play. It's so beautiful when it's when it's located well and when it's tunneled well because that that slider is admittedly, again, when it's sequenced well and, and it's located well, it's a good pitch. Like He's still got some developmental stuff to work on, but we'll take it. We'll gladly take it for start one. Uh, let's just go through all the pitching then while we're here. Uh, I guess that's how we're going to do it. Jason Foley, beauty, okay, beauty. One and one-third, one hit, one walk, no runs. The double play king is back. The ground ball CEO is back. That is the Jason Foley I remember. Uh, the slider, he threw it like six times, but it was all instances where I was okay with it being thrown, or I agreed even on a couple of them with it being thrown. Uh, one of them got a hitter way out in front, got a pop out. I don't remember who it was at the plate, but got a really routine pop out behind second base. Uh, and then the other one caused a ground ball that might have been the double play pitch. I don't know if I'm remembering that correctly, but definitely got a ground ball on one of the other ones too. Like that, it, it, he he's that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I, I truly, and I, I don't mean this in. A, I, I'm not trying to be like disrespectful because again, like this, these are major league pitchers and I'm at the end of the day talking about them on my couch, but I felt like in his last start, the, the not start, he's not a starter in his last appearance, his most recent appearance before this game, he was almost kind of pitching scared and, and like he was trying to nibble too much and he was trying to like be too cute with it and whatnot with the slider. We already talked about yesterday. And I thought in this one, he really went out there and attacked. And that is the Jason Foley. I remember attack, trust your stuff because you are the king of ground balls, and I love you. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful outing in that one. I hope to see that version of uh, of Jason Foley going forward. Jason Shreve got the eighth inning in this one. Uh, that splitter will play. It's all about how he sequences it and whatnot with his other pitches, but a very, very solid outing. I think he's going to be in the mix for that. Uh, that's depending on how long the starter goes, kind of that second out of the pen, right? Kind of that that not swing man because that means a different thing in baseball but uh the 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 pitcher that not the first out of the pen but is going to kind of carry you to your eighth and ninth inning guys i think that that could be chasing straight i know he pitched the eighth in this one but uh wasn't a safe situation by the end of it so good outing good outing from chasing street let's get into the last reliever that pitched in this one and what it means for where the bullpen stands right now because that is a very fluid situation but first, I got to tell y'all about our friends over at FanDuel. 
The NBA playoffs are almost here and it is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers are getting a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, it's super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line, point scores, three pointers drained, etc. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for the chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Segment two of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, we're back. We're so back. What a ball game. That that just that was so enjoyable to watch. It was close at times. They got out to the the late the lead late, kind of extended the lead late. Uh was a very rather, relatively speaking, lower stressed ninth inning. Wasn't perfect. And that leads us into Trey Wingenter, who did get the ninth inning in this ball game. Um, look, I, I mean, he got the ball in, in the ninth in a four-run ninth inning, so not necessarily a safe situation when he entered, uh, but I, I think it is still rather telling. That's still, I, I would still consider that high leverage, right? You you still have the possibility of one swing tying the ball game and blowing the save. Um, the slider and fastball are good pitches. I don't want to be a broken record with him either, but like his stuff will play. It's it's just on a nightly basis, them going where he wants them to go. And I, I don't think it was a super clean outing. I, I certainly don't think it was a, was a perfect outing by any stretch. Uh, I thought there was two times specifically that the fastball caught way too much of the plate. Um, and they, it shouldn't have, especially in the instances in which they did and the sequences in which they did. Uh, but when he's on, he is good. And it's just a matter of how consistently can he be on, I guess. Role watching is also very important. And we, we were, this is going to be a very, very consistent topic of conversation over and over and over again with this baseball team early on in the season. But Look, Wingenter gets high leverage last night in what he get the tenth inning in Tuesday. Well, in Monday night's game, and then on Tuesday night's game, he gets the ninth inning in a full run ball game. I think that's telling. And I, I, you know, he had a he had a rough outing in Tampa, but I I still think that that is a little bit of faith there. And again, it's it, it's hard to blame Hinch with that decision making when you see how effective he can be when his location and his command is on. And so I, I, again, not the cleanest outing ever, but I love going to him in a full run game. I love the decision to go to him there. Let's, let's throw some dudes out there in the ninth and see who takes the baton and runs with it. Okay. Let's get to the offense, shall we? And we're going to talk defense too. Let's get to position players. I had the same spiel almost word for word yesterday, but let, let's get to position players. Okay. Uh, first off, well, I guess we can't really talk about the position players on the Tigers without talking about the pitcher for the Houston Astros. Framber Valdez is is one of the best pitchers the American League has to offer. That is a, a, a phenomenal artist on the mound. And seven innings, two earned runs, nine strikeouts. That's a good outing. Like the Tigers did not tee off on Framber Valdez, but they got eight hits. They drew a walk in there. They got consistent, good ABs outside of one player who we'll talk about later. Like, this was certainly not a master class at how to tee up a really good pitcher, but it also was not getting dominated. And, and they kept their head above water. They stayed in the ball game, And then they they pounced on a, on a really, really good bullpen. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But this was – like, it wasn't a cakewalk. And when – but when you have threats in the middle of the lineup that are consistently threats to not only get hits themselves, but string together back-to-back -to -back base runners and then leads you to the rest of, of the bottom five of your lineup, bottom four of your lineup, to go then get them in, that's, that's their job. That's the point, right? 
And that's awesome. And that's what we saw in this game um, very, very consistently. Again, we'll talk about the players specifically a little bit later, but um, they made adjustments. And that's the other thing we didn't see very much last season. No adjustments being made from inning to inning, from game to game, from start to start. Just everybody rolling out there the same thing and hoping for different results. And and they made in-game adjustments. Like Valdez kills batters with like the the he has a sinker that he throws low and it's like mid 90s and it's crazy. It's one of the craziest fastballs or iteration of a fastball you will ever see. It's it's fascinating. And it's paired with a beautiful changeup. Okay. And he just tunnels the heck out of them. I really had to try not to swear there. He tunnels the heck out of them over and over and over again. And we saw how the Tigers against Springs in Tampa really did the same thing with a slower, less movie fastball. Movie is the scientific term. And and they got embarrassed, right? And and so to see them kind of make adjustments, and, and not only from game to game, but throughout the first and second and third time through the lineup, the seventh inning was not very great, but they scored runs in the fifth and sixth off of Valdez. And that's very, very impressive to me. So I was really pleased. I was really, really pleased with this game, even though Valdez's final line is still a very normal Framber Valdez line. Okay. Let's start with, with Javi Baez. Okay. Cause he was the one player that I don't think had really any good at bats. Uh, this is a frustrating game and it's been a frustrating season so far for Javi. Uh, he's to be honest with you, he's just swinging at literally everything, like, like literally everything. Uh, he, he made another, a couple of nice plays in the field that make you go, Oh my goodness. That was beautiful. It, it's just, it's a very giveth and taketh away relationship at the moment. <laughs> and I'm not sure that that's going to change necessarily. Um, but the three and four pitch at bats, are are so frustrating, especially when he's he's in the three hole. He's at the top of your lineup. Well, he's in the two hole in this one, was he? Was Torque the four hitter? I think. So like, just really, really frustrating game. He'll inevitably get hot. Like he's not going to hit a hundred all year. Like I I know that people love to dog on him and love to hate him. Like he's not going to hit a hundred. He's not going to have a three twenty OPS this season. Like. He's going to go on a heater and he, and he's going to be swinging a really hot stick at some point. And it's not going to last the whole season. It'll last a few weeks and then he'll do this again for a few weeks. And this is just like how it goes. It's just really frustrating that to start the season, we're in the cold streak and we're just like waiting and waiting and waiting for, for the inevitable Javi hot streak that, that at some point comes every season. So we'll see when it comes and we'll see how long it lasts. But like, very clearly, he has not changed his approach whatsoever from the rest of his career or last season, and uh, he is what he is. Uh, he's, he's, he's not changing. He's not going anywhere. He is what he is. Um, so that was the frustrating part of the game. Now, we're past that. The rest of the game was beautiful. Jake Rogers is someone I want to start with on the positive side of things. I love Jake Rogers. I, I love Jake Rogers so much. I said this in the spring, and I'll say it again. I think he should play more games at catcher than Eric Haas this season. Because, again, it is just – he had a couple of nice ABs as well in this game, RBI, I believe. Um, but he's just easily the best pitch receiver in this organization. Like, I don't even care. I'll, the entire organization, top to bottom. Like, comfortably. It's not particularly close either, I don't think. I, I think we're, we're going to take a look – Not it's very small sample size right now. But I think as the season goes along, we're going to take a look at catcher ERA because that's a cool stat that is available to us now. We're going to take a look at that and see if anyone comes close to Jake Rogers when it comes to catcher ERA on this team by the end of the season, because uh, I think he's a the, the best pitch caller on this team. I think he's the best pitch receiver on this team. I think he has the best arm on this team. I, 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 I know we're only a few games in, but I don't think any of those things are changing. Uh, so I, I am all for just Jake Rogers kind of just being past the torch of, and that's, again, you need two catchers these days. No one's going out there and catching 130 games anymore. Like you need, you need two catchers. So I'm not saying Eric Haas should just be like punted away and, and should not be on the team. Like he still has a lot of value when he's hitting. Um, but I think we should probably start getting comfortable with the idea that Jake Rogers is, uh, the presumed catcher of this team going forward. Okay, cool. That's where I stand with it. We'll see if management agrees with me and how quick that change happens if it does happen. 
Let's get into the rest of the offense because there's a lot of – let's actually – you know what? Before break, let's talk about Eric Haas. Um, has gotten off to a slow start to the season offensively, and that is where a majority of his value comes from. So that will be something to keep an eye on. But this was the first game this season where Jake Rogers and Eric Haas were both in the lineup at the same time uh, as the Tigers went eight righties. And Riley Green, I think, against Framber, uh, which, so, yeah, that, that was certainly very intentional. No Austin Meadows in this one. So, Eric Haas gets, gets the nod in left, and I don't think he looked bad. Uh, he wasn't, like, super tested. He didn't have any crazy plays. Like, Austin Meadows had that crazy play at the end of the game and whatnot. But uh, got his putouts, made flyouts look routine. And then the big one was the Alex Bregman. That was not a home run, by the way. I don't know. Like, I understand off the bat or, like, on the field. Maybe he thought it was a home run, but you look at that replay. That was very much not a homer. Um, and he heads up play, fire the ball back in there. He's still got a great, you know, still got the catcher's arm. Uh, fired it in there and and heads up heads up play there to, to get Bregman uh, at second base and, and end an inning, mind you, right? Like that was a really, really big play in a, in a very close game at the time. So, yeah, awesome stuff there. I thought, I thought he looked solid and left, which – can only lead to good things. Like versatility is is good when you have a team with where the Tigers are at currently. You want to play matchups on opposing pitchers as best as you possibly can. And Eric Haas being able to play competent left field only improves our ability to do that as a team. Okay? Cool. Okay, let's get to uh, another kind of weird versatility conversation in the infield, though. Right after I tell y'all about our friends over at the Ultimate Baseball GM, the best game out there right now. If you have had a dream of being a, a GM for a Major League Baseball team, now is your time and this is your game. It is the best. Download Pro Baseball GM immediately. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons, leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the simulation, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing through difficult personalities, injuries, uh, free agency, trade deadline, rule five, you name it. It's in the game. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline, play on the go as you want, when you want to. Locked On Tigers listeners are also getting a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com. You can scan the code on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube, or you can just search it in the app store. That's probaseballgm.com. It's the ultimate baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Oh, man, we what a ball game. What a ball game uh, for your Detroit Tigers. Oh, I love winning. I really do. I love winning. Let's talk more about some of the individual performances in this one. Um, I want to talk about the scope Kreidler scenario, okay? Because that was... That was really interesting to me. Um, Jonathan Scope plays third base in this game, and Ryan Kreidler plays second, which was kind of the reverse of what most people thought. Jonathan Scope had a great year defensively at second base last season, and Ryan Kreidler is naturally, and through the minors, was a third baseman, and they flipped him. And you very quickly saw why on the Kreidler side of things. He had an incredible game defensively, like phenomenal. Uh, like, like to the point where I'm rather confident in saying that a couple of plays, which then may lead to a couple of innings, go slightly differently without Ryan some Ryan Kreider plays at second base. He looks great. I know he had one that uh, bounced off his chest and, and it was led to an infield single, but uh, just range-wise, he was everywhere. Like balls that were hard hit up the middle, he, he was like diving and making – he looked great, Okay. And had a couple of uh, hits in this one as well. Not the most incredible at-bats I've ever seen in my life, but we'll gladly take hits from Ryan Kreider, and that's going to be the biggest thing. If he can hit well enough, he's going to stay on this baseball team and get a lot of ABs at that because he clearly, as shown in this game, was plus defensively. The bigger storyline is Scope playing third. Uh, he didn't look amazing over there, but I genuinely don't think he looked awful. I know a lot of people were dogging on him for a couple of the balls that there was two in the same inning that he charged 
and could not get the runner at first. Like, yes, he's not the the, the fleetest of foot. He's not the fastest dude on the planet. Um, but uh, those are those are tough plays. Those were going to be close no matter who was over at third, and the infield was back on at least one of them. So uh, I I don't know. I, I is he? I'm, I'm not trying to tell you he's the best defensive third baseman on the team because he's not. He's not even really close, but I don't think that he looked like out of place or horrific there. Like some people kind of made it sound like, um, th- but that's not even really the point. The big thing with that is big picture, right? Ryan Kreidler looks great at second. It's all going to come down to offense for him. Nick Maton, we know has experience at second, but is going to get a lot of looks at third. There's some dude in the minors that are also going to get looks at second and third as well. We already know that they've made a couple of trades, for right like McKinstry plays second base so and AJ Hinch's comments earlier in the week where he said scope is kind of in this platoon situation now which was something that we're talking about now on the show for the first time but was very much kind of sirens going off like okay that's that's news to I think everybody so I'm not saying his days are numbered and like Jonathan Scope's going to be on off the team in the next like week uh, but they maybe are starting to lean towards being numbered. Does that make sense? I, I, I Look, if he goes on a hot streak and he hits, he's going to be here. And he got a hit in this one. Hard hit single up the middle, lifted the ball a little bit. It was nice to see. Very nice to see Scope get a hit. It's been a while. Um, but that's going to be the key. If if he if he goes on a heater, he'll be here until he cools off, and then we'll see kind of where we're at in the season when he cools off. Um, but he's got to start hitting, and I think we're already starting to play other people at second, literally while Scope is still in the lineup. I think that that's somewhat telling, even though we're very early on in the season still. Okay, but Scope's hitting like bottom two in the lineup and, and still not hitting very well. So something to keep an eye on for sure. Matt Veerling, look, when you're hot, you're hot, kid. You know, when you're hot, you're hot. Two hits and a walk in this one gets gets on base three times. He was thrown out at home. I did want to talk about that a little bit. I enjoy aggressiveness on the base paths. And especially, like, Veerling's the fastest dude on the team. And Jordan is in left field. And Jordan is, for my money, literally the best hitter on the planet. But... It is not necessarily a, a, a platinum glove caliber player out there and left. So I was about it. And he got thrown out. You know what? Tip my cap. Good job, Jordan. Heck of a throw. That's one where I know he beat him by like a step. But if that throw is off, he's going to find a way to get in there and be safe. And it, it took a perfect throw and it was a perfect throw. So hats off. I, I know that. People love to do that anytime anyone's thrown out. It's just automatically the third base coach's fault. Yeah, you don't get to use hindsight, okay? Hindsight's twenty twenty. You don't get to do that. In that situation, I did not disagree with it. Um, and if you're going to be aggressive on the base paths, that means being risky and getting thrown out sometimes. That comes with the territory. No one's aggressive on the base pass and never gets thrown out. So you can't have it both ways. I didn't mind the decision there, truly. Um, the biggest story in this one, I, apparently I love saving the best for last, uh, Spencer Torkelson and Riley green go six for eight between the two of them in this ball game. Javi and Eric Haas betted ahead and behind them were no help. Uh, were oh for like 10 between the two of them. Oh, for nine between the two of them. Not very good. Uh, the, 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 the bread of that sandwich, right? With the, the top and the bottom of that duo was not very good. The, the hitters above and below them, but the two of them were stellar six for eight. The future is here. It was beautiful to see Riley green hitting the ball all over the yard. Not afraid to go the opposite way whatsoever. I think he was the one that hit it to left when Veerling got thrown out the play. Right. So we've talked about it before. Riley green's ability to go to all fields is incredible. But I think Spencer Torgelson's probably the story of this game. Goes three for four, as well as a moonshot to left field that almost gets on the train tracks. Um, the exit velocities for Torque in this game, okay? And I know exit velocity, whatever. He went three for four as well, so I get to talk about exit velocities, okay? I'm not going, oh, he went 0 for four, but look, he actually got hits, all right? So let me let me have my moment. 106. 109, 85 and a half, and 102.2. 
those were the miles per hour of the four, all four of the the balls put in play by Torgelson in this game. Three of the four over 102 miles an hour. He is crushing the baseball. And he has been all season up to this point. And it's nice to see him get rewarded and hit a ball literally to Oklahoma. I don't even know what direction Minute Maid faces. Maybe that's not Oklahoma. Maybe it's Mexico. I don't know. But crushed it. Okay? Awesome to see. As a whole, offensively, we'll end on this, man. Like, this is... That's how you keep the line moving. Like, that's... that's You need threats to have sustained multiple base runners in a row. And... Again, Javi and Haas, not too much help there, to be honest with you. But you saw there, six hits between our two, our three and our four hitter in this game. Matt Veerling, leadoff, gets on base three times. The bottom of the lineup, Ryan Kreider with two hits. Jonathan Scope with a hit. Jake Rogers with an RBI hit. That's what you need. You don't need... Uh, we're not asking... At, at the present moment, for a team full of dudes with a 900 OPS. Just competitive at-bats for nine innings. And sustained, like, keep the line moving type of approach. Okay, I go six pitches, I strike out, you go up there, you go six or seven pitches. Make somebody work. And look, Valdez is a darn good pitcher, and this was an impressive outing. This was not a master class. Again, but you had eight hits off of them in seven innings and a walk. That's nine base runners off of Framber Valdez. That's not bad. String together some good ABs and see what can happen. Tigers win a series in Houston. What a beauty. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every single day. For your next listen, check on the Lockdown Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Lockdown Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every single day. All right. Uh, I think that's it. Apologies to the night crew. The, the what do we call you guys the night squad the people that watch at midnight uh, i know that tonight's is going to be up way past midnight and yesterday's was up at like 1 30 or something because it went into extras tonight i had to record wet red wings as well so just didn't have time to do all of those before midnight so i apologize but for the foreseeable future coming home day games etc should have uh should have y'all covered with back on your regularly scheduled programming of of the <laughs> of, of uh, getting your episode at midnight. So shout out the, shout out the night squad, man. Um, I think that's it. Let's go sweep the Houston Astros. How about it? Peace and love going to therapy's dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.